No, I'm good. It was just a small like back thing, and I think okay. with the break coming up, it was just like a, a reason to kind of go on and get some extra days. So now you have a lot of Japanese fans. Oh, you know cool. that? Nice. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Sweet. Yeah, so it's everyone, you know, it's it's really worried about, you know, when it's are you coming back to the team. Yeah, I'll be there eventually. Yeah. You know, I'll be fine. Yeah. I think I'll be good after the break. Good. Like, it's I'm feeling good. Okay, so yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, what you said, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 All right, thank you very much. Yeah, good to see you, man. Yeah, you, we need you. Thank so. you, appreciate it, thanks. <laughs> Paul Skeens is here, obviously. Mm -hmm. Could Babe Ruth hit a Paul Skeens fastball? Maybe eventually, like, it depends on how many chances he'd get, you know? Like, I think if, like, because he obviously knows how to swing a bat, and, like, it, just if he saw it a bunch of times, potentially, but I think it's a lot harder than anything that he'd seen in his time, so it, that's a tricky question. 50 chances, is he even making contact? 50? <sighs> Maybe like a foul ball, maybe, I don't know. I think like a hundred, I don't think anyone was throwing that hard back then, and like the way it comes out of his hand. Maybe, maybe give him like a, yeah, I guess. I want to say no, but I don't want to disrespect the baby. Like, <laughs> I, I think yeah. it's all fair. All right, yeah. one more. Uh, so Shohei Otani, your teammate, uh, you've seen him day in and day out. Life or, death, life or death situation, you have to strike him out. How are you attacking him? Shohei? Mm-hmm. I would go spin out his own, like show him a slider, kind of because he like because he's gotten me slider like middle in before. So, and, but like if you go slider a little bit more back foot, he I think he he can chase it. You just can't miss. That's the biggest problem, and like missing happens pretty frequently for pitchers. So I'd probably just go spin out his own. You guys are in first place. I wanted to say that, but I was with you guys in spring training where it felt like the biggest rock band in the world, mm -hmm. and you. You don't have to say like the best record in the league. But do you think you guys have had a burden on you this season because of Otani, because of Yamamoto, because of yourself, the additions on top of an already great team? Do you feel like you're carrying a burden at all? I don't know. I guess I can only really speak like personally. I think it's one of those like you just you come in. Everyone here has played baseball so long. You come in and you almost like compartmentalize that. You don't really like look into it too much. I think for me it's more like you come to the field, you have your routine, you do it, and you go home and like baseball is the same thing. And I think me coming to a new team, that was my biggest like, how different is this going to be type of thing. And I think as spring went on and as season went on, it's extremely, obviously with the cameras and the exposure it's different, but like the, on between the lines it's still very much the same. Like you're still working on the same things you're working on to where if you kind of just focus on that uh, and just keep your routine and like your on-field stuff similar, you, it kind of feels a lot more like just take care of each day and don't worry about all that stuff. You uh, you mentioned you're going to be back early in the second half, uh -huh. just sort of second half. I'm assuming at some point you get bets, you maybe get Kershaw, uh -huh. others. Do you feel the best Dodger team, we still haven't seen the best Dodger team yet? Yeah, I think this team right now is extremely amazing. It's full of potential. I think getting everyone back and everyone everyone off the IL and having the team together. And I think the, as we get playing together more and like the more years we're with and like you get the kind of cohesiveness of everything it's just going to get better and better and better but i'm super happy with the team we have right now we have a great team and it's just going to get better thank you sweet thank you dude can i ask you about the abs challenge system yeah you, are you excited about it are you wary of it i mean i think you're probably a couple years away from seeing it in the big leagues uh i guess it would all just depend on how they map the zone and like how similar that is and like if the, like weird little like curveballs that nick the top of the zone right. for a hitter that might not be like I th if they can address that um it could be beneficial i kind of it's nice to have i think like the art of catching might get a little dicey just, just challenge stealing system, right? oh it's, oh you're saying just, oh, just i think you meant the abs there's system. no way it'll be full i think the challenge system's cool i was in triple a rehabbing once and i saw it and it was like the most fun part of the game like really? it be, oh it was so much fun because i think it's like you feel vindicated like i, I think a lot of <laughs> i think a lot of what the umpires know i think too the stats were like 60 percent right for the umpires like 56 percent. so they generally beat the player to where like if right. a, a player is kind of like given attitude or something and then they challenge and they don't get it it's like i'm telling you just get live feedback and i think it's like a player gets frustrated with an umpire sometimes and it's just live feedback to be like i told you like if you're really upset you get to challenge and if you're just being mad to be mad you waste the challenge so there's like a strategic element to it and it's just it, it's entertaining you get like immediate <laughs> emotional feedback and it's just it was fun when i was in triple a looking at it are you afraid you would get emotional and challenge when you really shouldn't challenge no i think for the most part i have like a a relatively like sane approach to if I think something is like a ball or it's not generally because yeah. I'm looking at it too like it's harder for the umpire like my vantage point is probably easier for me to see it's way harder behind the plate um, so I think it would be beneficial just to have like one that I really needed and I thought it was a strike like just to have a challenge would be nice so I was going to ask you but I think you've already said but would it be a better game if you knew that that big pitch with the bases loaded in the seventh inning was always going to be right because you could challenge 
Yeah, I think it would be. It's it's. That's a good point. I think it would be nice. And I think to just to like lose or win a game off of like a judgment call can be a little frustrating sometimes to where now that if it is, you can like have a, a thing to go back to. And then if it is, you think it's a strike and it's not, it's like it's your fault. It's no one else. You know what I mean? So it's like it's taken. It's not like as field based. You're just kind of more accurate. Do you think it's important for big league players to get a chance to try it out? Maybe in spring training? Yeah, sure. I, I don't. I guess too, like. Whether it's implemented or not, like I'm, I'm not quite sure. I guess you said it was like a few years away. I didn't. I, I don't know if the umpires want to do it. Away, okay. I guess. Yeah. I don't know if like if it has to clear with the umpires first, like how that, like all the political stuff with that. Like I don't know how that goes, but I think uh, uh, spring training would be get, uh, like enough time to get used to it because it's not really changing the game. It's not like a like a clock or anything. It's just very much like you're still playing the same game and you challenge if you don't like the call. But it goes back to what you said at the beginning: is you get a feel for what's a strike and what's not a strike. Yeah. And I, I would think you guys would want one input it's, input on that. Yeah. Right. Now I think that's what I was kind of talking about. Like as yeah. far as the zone goes, I think that's the biggest like thing that would need to be accurate. Like what, what's the judgment call of what is a strike and what's not a strike? Like is it? So I, I think like defining what the strike zone actually is, understanding that, and then going from there. Yeah, I'll tell you the other issue too is making sure it's calibrated to every player yeah, it's, yeah. individually. I don't know if yeah, right, or every hitter, right? Like, right. I mean, you were yeah. in the competition too many, so I don't know if you heard I'm what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You were. Well, I was. Yeah. I, I'm not in it anymore. Right. But uh, yeah, I'm sure. I guess with that, it'd be an easier automated zone too. Just like being able to switch to hitters, because it's hard for an umpire to have all that responsibility. Would you like, use, like wearable technology to do it. I think I'm pretty sure you can it? probably just map it from the hitters, right? Like like a belt to a knee, or like you can just map it, right? Like the zone would be like, hey, Aaron Judge is hitting, and then now Altuve is hitting. It's like probably like you can just shape it off of like right. the vantage point of behind the home. What about plate. a six foot six guy who has a crouch? I, I think you. Oh, that's a good point. I don't know. I think maybe get it to like the middle of their swing, like where they're at when they're because like this right. stuff is all you can change it to maybe get to like their height as where their head is when they're swinging, and then yeah. average it off of that. Okay. Um, curious who your prediction is uh, for the, to win the home run derby tonight. I'm going to Oscar just because I've seen him take BP. And then if I had a, a second choice, it would be probably Pete, just because he's, like he's just done it so many times and he's really good at it. So I'd say to Oscar, then Pete. What do you think is the most iconic baseball play of all time? I, I mean, darn. <laughs> <laughs> most iconic baseball play of all time? Probably maybe like a Kurt Gibson home run. That's pretty, pretty iconic. Favorite ballpark to play at as a visitor? I like uh, I like Yankee Stadium. I like like Wrigley or Fenway, probably. I don't know how to choose out of those. Wrigley or Fenway is probably the easiest answer. Yeah. Who are you most looking forward to playing with while you're here? Oh, man, there's so many people. Everyone just being in the clubhouse with like everyone, like Chris Sale and like guys have done it for a long time. Um, and obviously, even just being here with my teammates and stuff, it's been really cool. But any someone in particular, I guess like probably Sale. I guess yeah. And last one, what's your favorite pregame meal? I usually just go big breakfast in the morning, like chicken and eggs. Hi, how are you? Chicken, eggs, like rice or something, and then some fruit. And then I try not to eat super close to my start. Awesome. Thanks, yeah. Al. Thanks. There's an interview with your dad saying, like, you know, you don't make it in LA until you get your own bobblehead. Can you talk about that whole experience? It was great, yeah. I think just growing up, like, it's a kind of a surreal moment. Like, as a kid, if someone were to tell me, like, you have a bobblehead at Dodger Stadium, I'd be like, no, I, no, I don't. It's crazy. So just come full circle and have a bobblehead is pretty insane and as a fan growing up did you stay through to the ninth inning or try to no beat the, beat the i was out in the seventh it would <laughs> depend on the game but like i lived in santa cruz which is relatively far especially where the traffic gets going and it was always on like a like a weekday so i had school the next day which sucked so we'd always leave at like seventh inning